Welcome to MSU Inside Out. I'm Autumn Roll. And I'm Ariel Co. And first we'd like to talk to you about a group that's come in here, Six Appeal. If you guys have ever watched Pitch Perfect. Yeah, it's something be like that. Joining us here. Have you watched Pitch Perfect? Yes, I love that show. I love that Absolutely show. Absolutely love that. Yeah, it's it they I think that show is what introduced me to Acapella. Okay. Right? So like uh, Six Appeal, they'll be coming uh, next Tuesday, seven PM at Anne Nicole Nelson Hall. And they're actually like a small group that started in Concordia College. Okay. Uh, back in Moorhead. So um, they started in two thousand six and they, they they are performing everywhere in the United States now. So they started in school and they decided to take it serious and yeah, use yeah. it as a career. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, so they're on YouTube if people want to check them out. You know, just type in Six Appeal. Uh, they're everywhere and they have two albums now. They even have a Christmas album. Well, with Christmas coming up, you guys want to make sure I listen to their um, album. Yeah. Is that they'll be in Minot? Um, yes, they will be. Uh, what do you mean? In Minot? They'll be, they're, they're coming to Minot? Yes, they are. They're coming to Minot State University. Okay, so. You guys better go watch them. Are mm -hmm. you going to go, Lane? Definitely. Definitely going to go see, check it out. It's going to be a great concert, and the best part is it's free. Yeah. So you, well, you can't get any better than that. Like, it's like a top quality act, and we don't have to pay to go see it. We just show our IDs, and we get to go. Wow. Yeah. It's going to be a good time. That's a plus yes. to be a MSU yeah. student. It is. It is. <laughs> By this time last year, temperatures had already dropped to as low as 19 degrees. Most fishermen were in full ice fishing mode, buying tackle and plenty of bait. And as we all know, this November's temperatures have been nothing short of beautiful. Hey, I hooked you. You're not very big. What the hell? Frickin' bullheads. <laughs> ah. What you don't want to catch. Why? They ain't no good to eat. And there's a pile of them in here, but a lot of times when the water's cold, they don't bite. Oh, All types of fish can be found including walleye, yellow perch, northern pike, and the not so beloved bullheads. Here you see Mr. Gus just caught a bullhead. Unfortunately, he's looking for a little bit bigger version of this fish. Soon the weather will be dropping and ice fishing will be just around the corner. Mr. Gus says he's hopeful for a good season. Creative Minds came together last Friday for the second creative social hour in downtown Minot. MSU students and Minot locals participated in the event to showcase their talents and to make connections with local businesses. The event featured fashion designs by Tori Danny, live painting, music, and other live performances. Attendees also played games to get to know each other. Tori describes her vision for the next event. The Creative Social Hour is going to continue in the future and I want people to, you know, reach out if they want to showcase their work, showcase their talent because I think it's a really good way to put yourself out there and inspire others. Tori says she plans to host a Creative Social Hour every semester. Veterans Day is tomorrow and the Minot Veterans Center wants its veterans to know that they are here to help and show their appreciation. William Robinson has more on the report. There are many hidden secrets in Minot, one of them being the Vet Center. This is a key element in helping military men and women deal with issues of being home by offering them many services to aid in their success. Hi, my name is Gera Hammack and I'm a readjustment counselor at the Minot Vet Center. Here at the Vet Center, we provide readjustment counseling to combat some veterans and their families. And even though our services are geared towards the combat some vet, we will see any veteran for up to five visits. Issues we help with include uh, readjustment issues, PTSD, military sexual trauma, and bereavement counseling. The Vet Center opens its doors to all proven vets no matter how old or what branch of service. 
and veterans appear to have a great appreciation for it. Helps me keep both oars in the water, mainly. To where if I got any problems, I can come in here and discuss it with them and, you know, uh, not medical problems so much, but mental problems. Dealing with situations. And I meet other veterans here from other eras, and there's like a bond. Doesn't matter what era the veteran is. And For more information about the Minot Vet Center, you can visit the Minot Vet Center at 1400 20th Avenue Southwest. We are Robinson with KMSU Channel 19 News. Looking on to next week, there's going to be a lot for students to do. The Mesa's first free skate at, of the year will be Monday at 9.30. Six Appeal will be coming to Minot State on Tuesday for a free concert for all MSU students and staff. The Native American Culture Awareness Club will be putting on a sale Wednesday to help raise funds for the club. MSU's Brass and Woodwind will be performing on Friday, which will be another free concert for students to attend. I'm really excited for this next upcoming week. There's a lot going on. Anything that really stood out to you, Autumn? The free skate. I mean, I cannot skate, but at the same time, like I'm excited to try it and maybe fall and learn. I'm in the <laughs> same boat exactly. you are. I can't skate. I've never actually done it, but I'm, like, I'm really excited to go out and give I've, it a shot. I have skate before, but I still haven't learned the trade. Yeah. So. <laughs> Not quite yet. Just a little bit more practice. Yeah. yeah. November 17th, Minot State University will be hosting the cult cultural celebration where international students will be displaying different aspects of their culture. Here with me is Libby Claire about the director of the program. Hi, Libby. How are you? Hi, Autumn. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming to, to, to MSU today, I mean, to Minot State. So the celebration began four years ago. What prompted you mm -hmm. guys to start the celebration? Well, the celebration is held um, during what is called International Education Week, and that's a nationwide effort to um, educate um, the general population on um, opportunities to travel abroad and learn um, from different cultures as well as um, to attract international students and scholars here to learn um, and teach and um, share their cultures. And so we were trying to think of a way to highlight um, the international students and scholars that are on our campus and it kind of came from that. Okay, makes sense. Yep. So it seemed to grow every year. I've been a part of it for two years. Yes. And every year it seems to grow larger and larger. How are mm -hmm. you guys uh, um, accommodating the growth from the students and the attendees? Mm -hmm. um, well, we just, um, as we receive the registration forms, we kind of see, you know, what kind of interest there is in, in um, people having a display. This year we've actually um, shrank a little bit. Last year we had 26 booths, um, and this year we're going to have 20 20 uh, groups who are participating. I sent six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry we're not able to. No, I think it's I think it's still good because the excitement on the part of students is there. Okay. Um, and it's still going to be a very vibrant and, and fun activity. Definitely. So there's a lot of countries represented in at Minot State that will be there. Yes. Can you tell me some of the unique things that you've seen over the years? Yeah, um, so most, most um, groups choose to do some sort of like photo display or culinary um, tasting okay. um, from their home countries. Uh, last year we had a girl from Pakistan who did some um, henna tattoos okay. on hands. Um, and the Nigerian table is actually always really fun because we, it's our largest student population. We have um, between 16 and 20 Nigerian students. Okay. Um, and they're kind of a... Um, uh, I, want, I don't want to say rowdy <laughs> group, but they're very um, uh, vibrant, uh, yes, vibrant and alive, and they play music, and they're all dancing. And I remember so. last year, Kundai had a, a drum, and he yes. was like going up and down yep. the hallway, so that was fun. Yeah, so, um, you know, each culture has its uniqueness, um, and students find fun ways to represent that. Okay, so what was your favorite celebration? Like, what was your favorite thing at one of the celebrations? Oh, no, that's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I love um, to taste different foods from different parts of the world. And last year, Nepal had a really good dish with um, peanuts that were kind of seasoned and flavored and soaked in oil. And so the food aspect. Yeah, I like the food. And I like the music. Um, but I also like to interact with students in a way that I don't have the opportunity to um, otherwise. Okay, makes sense. I know I enjoyed being a part of it mm -hmm. because it was the first time that I get to talk about my culture 
in a wide on a wide platform and a lot of people were interested so mm -hmm. I thank you for having that opportunity for us yes it's fun <laughs> it really is well thank you Libby thank so you. the cultural celebration is next week Thursday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. be sure to go and visit now coming up on MSU inside out a suspicious, a suspicious object was found in Pioneer Hall yesterday. Here are the details from campus security. Did you know that you can experience Asian culture right here at MSU? Hear more from the Asian Club. Our beavers are headed to regionals. Anthony has more with sports. Mother Nature loves us, apparently. Find out more from Leaf with Weather. All that and more coming up on MSU Inside Out. All American Trophies for all your screen printing and embroidery needs. Located on South Broadway. Artman, women's clothing, accessories, and art supplies. Located at 13th Main Street, South Minot. Badlands Grill, featuring steak, seafood, chicken, pasta, and classic comfort food. At Badlands, everyone is welcome. Buffalo Wings and Rings, the sports restaurant experience where everyone is a VIP. B, W, and R goes way beyond just Buffalo Wings. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, and sports, located on South Broadway across from Walmart. Center for Extended Learning, reaching across the state of North Dakota and beyond. The Minot State University Center for Extended Learning empowers you to choose your educational path. Digital Office Center, technology solutions for every business need, located in Minot and Bismarck. El Azteca, authentic Mexican cuisine, fresh and fast. Beyonce Bridal, located in downtown Minot, and now you can shop online. Happy Joe's Pizza and Ice Cream, good times to be together. iHeartMedia, providing multi-platform advertising and marketing opportunities for partners and world-class entertainment for listeners. Jacobson Music, a family-owned music business with three retail locations in Dickinson, Bismarck, and Minot. KCJB 910 AM, Minot's news and information station. KIZZ FM, Z94, Minot's only station for today's hit music. KRRZ, 1390 AM, Minot's classic hits. KXMA, Mix 99.9, Minot's best music mix. KYYZ, FM 97 kicks today's hot new country. KZTR FM, 105.3 The Fox, Minot's rock station. MSU Beaver Hockey. Visit us online at msubeaverhockey.com or on Facebook and Twitter. MSU Athletics, NCAA Division II, promoting good character and a positive experience. Red Rising. MSU Art Department, stimulating creativity campus-wide by providing exhibits and art events. MSU's Theater Department, offering the highest quality of entertainment at Minot State. Enjoy. We'll see you at the theater. Midwest Oil Jobs brings employers, retailers, and other professionals from the Midwest to connect under one roof. Minot Plumbing, from winter chills through the dog days of summer. Our primary goal at Minot Plumbing and Heating is to keep your home comfortable for you and your family. Pepsi, the local Pepsi Cola bottling company serving the North Dakota areas in Minot, Dickinson, Devil's Lake, and Bottineau. Peter Pit, fresh thinking, healthy eating, located on South Broadway. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. Red Green, Minot State's official student run newspaper. Spicy Pie, pizza, grinders, beer, located at Beaver Ridge Plaza. Taco John's. Offering fresh tacos, burritos, nachos, and breakfast. Mixing Mexican and Western flavor. Watney Realtors, full-service real estate agencies handling residential, commercial, and investment properties. You can visit them online at MinotHomes.com. Watney Realtors, Kerry Montoya, located on Northwest Broadway. MSU Inside Out. Yesterday, Pioneer Hall was evacuated after a suspicious object was found in the basement. Joining us today is MSU Campus Security and Safety Director, Gary Orlock. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you so much for joining us. I know that a lot of MSU students are really wondering what that was because it was a big commotion yesterday. We saw a lot of people being evacuated out of the building. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us like um, in more specific, how did they find that object? Sure. Well, about 10.30 yesterday morning, there was uh, a couple of people that were going through a storage uh, room inside of Pioneer Hall in the basement. Mm -hmm. And it's, that particular room is isolated from the rest of the building, and so it's not used very often. But they were just going through some of the artifacts. It was a storage room, and there was a lot of old, interesting items in there. And uh, some of that was going to be donated to the State Historical Society. Right. 
And as they were going through the process of going through boxes and opening, they came across a box that had two very suspicious items in it. Okay, okay. And that's when they called you? Yes, they actually recognized the items. Uh, they were actually Civil War er era um, cannonballs. Mm -hmm. One was a solid steel one, and mm -hmm. it was probably about you know this big. And uh, there, the, another one was similar in size, but that was designed to, as an explosive or an anti-personnel shrapnel. It would create shrapnel, you know. Right. So. Okay, so there was an actual threat then? There was. It, it, it was a danger. I mean, it, nobody had planted it. The, the, the things, the box had probably been in that room for many years, mm -hmm. but it, it just was not known that it was in there. And uh, because of the unknown, we decided to you know, treat it as, as a dangerous object yes, and, yes. and make sure that we, for the safety of everybody, we, we went through every room in Pioneer Hall and, mm -hmm. and all the dorms and our apartment rooms and made sure that uh, people were notified and we asked them just to step out of the building and, and go to a safe place away from the building until we could have that right. object removed. So. Okay, and I heard like the um, Air Force Base was involved as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, once we, once we had cleared the building then we made sure that uh, the police and fire department were also notified. Uh, the Minot Police Department has a, a memorandum, memorandum of understanding with the U.S. Air Force mm -hmm. and because this was most likely a military type explosive yeah. uh, the US Air Force was called their bomb disposal unit was was notified and mm -hmm. so then they came to campus okay that, yeah this is it's really good that um, it, it's good to know that there was actually a threat because we mm -hmm. haven't read it on the newspaper and we don't know what exactly was there mm -hmm. so thank you so much for looking out for us yes no problem um, so uh, will there will we do you think that they will ever be such an item around campus again do you think there's a chance that we will find it I think this was an isolated incident. Right. I think the, 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 these were probably on campus, probably you know, well over 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, they, were in a, they were stored in another building. Um, Memorial Building used to be a library many years ago before the new library was built. And uh, people do remember that, that they had seen them back way back at that time. Mm -hmm. And so they'd probably been in the Pioneer Hall sitting in that room for 28 years, but nobody just really realized that they were there, and then once it was found, it was we we, re, we decided we need to treat this very very carefully and and safely for everybody. Okay, thank you so much. So thank you so much for taking care of our safety yeah. on campus, um, and thank you so much for joining us. Yes, no problem. Thank you. Next up on uh, next up in light of Cultural Celebration Week, the MSU Asia Club will be hosting a traditional Japanese tea ceremony. James Nora is live at the Beaver Dam with Club President Ton Yamashita. Knowing your culture is a must, but applying that in your life is something we all should do. And today, what better way to ex learn somebody else's culture? To me, to standing next to me, we have Tom Amanisha, who's here to doing just that. And with that being said, about your tea party, can you explain to it, me to it, and what is it that you would like, that what is, what is that you get out of the culture? What does it mean to you? Um, tea party is like, we Asia Club, we're going to sort of demonstrate how to make tea by each country, like Japan, we're going to have green tea, in China, we're going to have flour, the herb tea, herb tea, and in Korea, we have roasted corn tea, and each tea has like, some background or back history, so we're going to like teach or demonstrate tea, and also we're going to talk about the cultural stuff in each country. And this is great for learning what their culture is, even it's not like deeply or seriously, even it's more like friendly, casual, kind of like short, fun learning. Yep. Okay, with that being said, and with this tea, like what are the different meanings for each tea and what does the tea of your culture mean to you? Well, the green tea to us is like very, um, we are very familiar with green tea, we like every day we drink green tea or even like something professional or fancy party we still drink green tea. So it's very really, like each cut each, like even not Japan, maybe China has also the same thing like from a long time ago they drink tea like daily basis. So yeah. Okay. And with that being said, again, um, how does you being president of the Asian Club tie into your cultural beliefs and and how are your you know daily lives of being cultural as a Japanese person out here? You know, is it like not as as much valued as here as you would say, be in back in California? What's the difference between that? Oh, um, 
here, especially here, like in Minna, we don't see any other like cultural stuff. We see Chinese restaurant or kind of Japanese restaurant, but we don't see like actual Japanese culture or Asia culture. So I think Asia Club, we are a club for teaching or like, telling what Asia is, what like each country represents, and to learning how different each country is. And it's, yeah, it's different here. It's very not diverse, I think. Yeah. And with that being said, we would like to see more of Japanese culture and make sure you come to Old Main next Friday to, you know, be able to be a part of the tea comp uh, party. And that would be in Old Main at um, 105, 104, and also at 5 o'clock. And with that being said, we'll have Ariel with another interview coming up shortly. Thank you, James. Um, so do you think you'll be going for the Japanese tea ceremony? Depending on if it's Monday, when is it? Monday or Tuesday? Yes, but I actually leave my not for a bit on Wednesday. So oh, that's too bad. I may not be here. Make sure that. to go try it for you. I will. Thank you. So Anthony, what's on sports today? Uh, sports, we have a lot of a lot of teams wrapping up their seasons and uh, a lot of them beginning them as well as we have winter sports starting up soon and uh, soccer is on the road in Missouri right now. Okay. Yeah, so we'll get started. Yeah. Senior forward Chloe Melton was named the National Soccer Coaches Association of America NCAA Division II Women's Player of the Week for her performance in the NSIC Conference Tournament. She was also able to score the Conference Tournament's first hat trick. The Beaver soccer team makes its second straight NCAA tournament appearance as the fifth seed in the region. They will play the fourth seed Central Oklahoma University tomorrow at 2 p.m. If they win, they will move on to the next round against number one seeded Central Missouri Sunday at 2. The girls were regular season conference champs and undefeated in the conference this year. This week on the Road to Minot preview, you get to meet soccer, Clo uh, soccer player from Fleet England, Chloe Melton. Background of life back home and then up to coming to Minot. Um, well, I think I started about the age of seven. Um, playing for, um, I used to play for boys teams. Um, they didn't really have girls teams when we, we were younger. Um, so you, you know, if you wanted to play, you had to play with the boys. Um, and I, I loved it. I mean, I think it made me, you know, the player I am today mm. because, I mean, playing with boys is always gonna make you, you know, that bit quicker and your touch that bit better. Um, so I played with the boys up until, I think maybe like the age of like 13 or something. And then I had to transfer to girls soccer and I wasn't, I wasn't impressed. I didn't want to. I didn't want to leave the boys' team because, um, I mean, you used to get a lot of attention being the only girl on the team, and you know, still kicking the boys, the boys' butts and stuff. <laughs> so that was that was good. Um, and then you know, I just started playing with the girls' teams, and um, yeah, I had some pretty good success with the teams back at home up until I came here. Um, played for a pretty good team, um, Reading at home, and they. Uh, they're now in the Women's Super League, you know, they're in the top flight of, of soccer over there, so um, they're doing really well, but yeah, and then I saw I came over here after that. But. It's the full interview with her on the Sports Splurge Facebook page. The Monette State Volleyball team has two games left in their season, and both games will be on the road. Their first game is tomorrow against the University of Sioux Falls Cougars at 7 p.m. Their next game is on Saturday against the number four ranked team in the nation, Southwest Minnesota State University. The ga that game is at 3 p.m. and will be their last game of the season. The Beavers are still looking for their conference win first conference win of the season and working hard to hopefully earn it this weekend. The Minot State football team will have their final game of the season Saturday at Herb Parker Stadium. The Beavers will be playing an in in-state rival at the University of Mary for the Battle of the Big Lakes Trophy. The series between the two rivals is tied at 12 wins for each. The Beavers are currently the holders of the trophy as they won last year and hope to keep it. Kickoff is at 1 p.m. and you can listen live to Leaf and I with your play-by-play -play on msgbeavers.com. Winter sports are here and kicking off their seasons this weekend. First, the Minot State University wrestling team get to open their season this year at the North Dakota State University Bison Open. The tournament will start at 9 a.m. Beavers were picked to finish ninth in the NSIC. Mitchell Yule is ranked fourth in the conference and led the Beavers last year with 22 wins and five pins. He will be leading a young beaver team this year as they were able to add 17 new beavers to the roster. The men's basketball team will be heading down to Lancaster, Texas where they play four games 
two versus Henderson State University, and two versus Southern Arkansas tomorrow and Saturday. The Beavers were also picked to finish 12th in the conference according to preseason NSIC polls. The women's basketball team will be heading south as well this weekend with two games. The first one will be Friday in Topeka, Kansas versus Washburn University. Tip-off is at 2. Then they go to Warrensburg, Missouri to take on Central Missouri on Saturday. Tip-off is at 7.30. The ladies were also picked to finish 13th in the NSIC conference according to preseason polls. The Monet State hockey team will be playing their first home game in the new Pepsi rink at the Mesa Arena. They will play in-state rival the University of Jamestown. They will, it will be a battle between the third-ranked team in the nation and the eighth-ranked team in the nation. Puck drops at 7.30. Well, by the way, I just want to thank Minot City Hoagies for sponsoring today. It's a very delicious sub. Were really good. Yeah, they were really good. So good. <laughs> perfect. I believe you enjoyed it. That's Hoagies in town. Thank you, Minot City Hoagies. Okay, so the Okay, so Are you going to the hockey game? Yes, I will be. I will be actually taking fit photos for the MSU Red and Green. Okay, well that's good. Yeah. But you won't get to experience it if you're too busy taking pictures like I'll make sure to take pictures and then watch the game. <laughs> and yeah, the, I, but what if something good happens? I you want to catch that I, on camera. Yes, that is true. How about like I watch at the same time? Watch the game. Well, hopefully that works for you. <laughs> yeah. Leaf, are you going to the hockey game? Uh, hopefully, hopefully after football I'll go down there and it should be fun. But uh, well, it takes a lot of talent if you can take pictures and watch the game at the same time. Yeah, but not as talented as you with the play by play. Oh yeah, I know, <laughs> no, not really. It's uh, it's you got to come by it. I don't know. It's something that you got to work on, especially hockey. I haven't worked on that very much. Oh yeah. So, uh, but it's gonna be nice weather for everybody. Go out to the rink and check out the new place this weekend out yeah, at Mesa. It's gonna definitely. be really nice. So we'll go check that out actually. As we look at uh, the f temperature right now in Minot, it's 57 degrees, and it feels like 57 even with the northwest winds at 13 miles per hour and very beautiful out as the sun's starting to set as we look into our weekend here and see that uh, it's going to be nice uh, tomorrow very sunny with 51 degrees here and looking at 50s across the state except on the east side of the state we see grand forks and fargo going to be sitting at 45 so a little bit cooler but uh, they won't they'll just be right above freezing uh, overnight tomorrow looking at saturday though we've got better weather with 60s across the state 65 here uh, it's going to be the warmest down in dickinson at 67 but still staying kind of cool over on the east side thanks to mike blessman state farm for this week's sports outlook as it will be 60 degrees and sunny at kickoff for the battle of the big lake with the university of mary we wish the beavers and the marauders best of luck in this final game of the nsic and moving on to sunday we can see that it's going to be in the 50s and finally, the east side of the state will warm up to right around 60 degrees, but uh, it's going to be kind of cloudy down in the west, southwest. And with that, it, and we look at our extended forecast, it's going to be uh, kind of cloudy, and we see a lot of rain coming uh, on the way as well. That could turn into snow on Tuesday and Thursday, but things are uh, looking pretty dry so far. Nothing uh, too major coming up uh, except for Tuesday and Thursday next week. We're expected to get some rain and we've got a lot of guests here. Suddenly. Yes, we do. <laughs> so today, like um, joining us on the show is actually students from Rugby High School. Everybody say hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're joining us. Hopefully they will all be future broadcasters here at Minot State University. Yeah, hopefully they'll hopefully. be joining Neil and Christina and some of our freshman students. So. Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. All right. So for the song of the week, it's Your Body's a Weapon by Wombat. Never heard that one before. I haven't heard that either. And <laughs> special thanks to Magic City Hokies for sponsoring this show. Sometimes I like to go uptown with flashy people.